Okay, I am back. I'm back in the real meaning of Christmas coloring art. This is by Product Concepts, and they did send this to me for review, and I have really, really enjoyed coloring in this book. So, um, I want to go ahead and work on the cardinal now. Next time when I come back, we'll work on um, the trees and some snow. So let's zoom in on this guy, and it is a guy, only the guys are all red. The girls are the ones that have tan, which I have grown to think that they are lovely in their tan, because, um, you know, the guys are the colorful ones to protect her. So, all right, I am just pulling some oranges, some reds, um, I've got black in here. Oh, you know what I need, I need some purple some purple for the deeper areas remember purples are great for shadowing and all that type thing so the first thing I did was a light orange all over and then I have done a bright orange I'm doing right there on the beak okay then I am going to come in with this browner shade and come in and do a little bit here where the beak meets the actual face because it would be a little darker there. Start light, better to do several shades. Then I am going to come in with my red. Start doing my little circular motion. Okay, and I did go ahead and use the black to do that area on the face. I'm having to reach across the table to get to this. All right, I'm sorry, I'm just making sure we were still in the camera, still where you could see it. I hate whenever it zooms out of the picture and then I'm sitting here talking about it and you're not seeing anything okay do you see how I left this I'm gonna go real light there but I don't want to fill that with color because I actually want to come back in and use my darker red there more of a um, burgundy shade now by putting orange down first it has knocked back the white and should give a little bit of depth to the red that I'm using. I hope that makes sense. This red though looks a whole lot more pigment or redder for better lack of any other words. Okay, I'm going to bring that down. Now, you saw I did strokes there instead of the circles. That is just because that's the way the hair or the feathers would have come in at that point. So I knew I could get away with doing it. Alright, so coming in here with this red. And a lot of people have wanted to see real-time coloring, so that's why I'm not pausing these videos a whole lot and see even though I'm going fast it's still got that start circular motion in there and you do want to slow down a little when you get to the feet areas where the little um, legs are sticking out you don't want to accidentally go in there and I really should have looked up to see what color their legs are before I turned on the camera because I would hate to do them in brown and then find out that they really should have been done in gray or in a tan because they actually do have different colors on several of the different birds so do your research if you're wanting them to look realistic and I imagine this camera is bobbling all over the place. Yep, I'm really shaking the table good. 
but it happens. I get in a hurry, and I know that as long as I'm doing my ovals, it's okay. Now, if I were just doing straight lines and in a hurry, it would look, leave a jagged look. But because I'm doing the ovals, I can get away with it because there's no straight point. It just curves and comes back around. Okay, now that's going to be good enough for a little bit. Now I'm going to go to my burgundy. And I'm going to come here. And now I'm going to pull. You can hear it. Can you hear that? Do you see a difference there now? How this looks like it's tucked underneath there? I don't think my phone will go any closer. Oh, look, it did. I have to move the book further away, but that's all right. I can climb up on the table if I need to. <laughs> all right, so on this one, it's going to come down this way. Okay. If you do that movement, oh, come on, camera, quit bouncing around. Okay, anybody that does their own videos, I'm, I'm game. How do you keep your camera from bouncing around? Okay, and see, it'll be dark there because these two come together, and that's a little intersection point. Right here is going to be a little darker because these come out from under this. Okay, it's going to be darker right in here because this is on top of this. It could be darker down under here just because this is the base. And I'm going to turn this so that I can actually get to it. Okay. And then I'm going to go in circles because I want to blend it in to what's up above. And if I can see white, that means I still have a lot of tooth showing in my paper. So I'm going to go back to that original red and try to get rid of some of this white. Okay, that looks pretty good. There we go. There's more of it going away now. And you'll see more on camera that's white than what I will see with the naked eye because you're up closer to it. It's been blown up. But this is going to be okay in just a few minutes. Now I am doing the streaking, but I'm trying to go straight right next to each line next to each other. And I think I've got my clear plastic in here. Oh, I don't. And I don't see it laying here, so I don't know where I left it. I usually put a clear plastic behind the paper to um, keep from smushing down the grain on the next sheet of paper. So, oh well. I'll need to find that before I start the next video. Okay, so there he's looking pretty sharp. I'm going to come in with the purple. You know it. Shading. Alright, so I'm going to come right in here. And I know that looks dark, but if I'd have used black, it would have been really dark. But do you see how that just pushed that to the back? That's what we're looking for. And it's with purple. Go outside on a sunny day. Your shadow is not black. It is more of a purple. So now I'm going to come in here again. Long strokes because that's the direction that grows. Now I'm going to do my circles because I really want to blend that. 
And as long as you're not seeing a definite line, then I'm doing it right. This right here needs a little bit of work. There we go. Now that's blended out too. I'm going to do a little bit of this burgundy right around this area and just put a bit in here just so that it looks a little more defined. Alright, he's looking pretty sharp. Now, that black face, at this point you have several options. We've got several different black markers. I've got a Sharpie. I've got this one that's by Prismacolor. And I've got this one that is actually from Daiso, which is our Japanese equivalent to your dollar store, I think. It's a cartridge that has a brush tip on it. And I love this brush. So this is what I'm going to use. Now you put down the black first. And I am going to slide something under here just in case it goes through. But by putting down the black pencil first, it will generally keep this from doing any streaking. Hopefully I'm doing a good job on this. Again, I am reaching across the table because my light is over here. My camera is clipped off the side of the table. And now because I'm trying to do so careful, my hand has started to shake. Okay, so that black is good and black. So now I do want to go in here and I'm going to put some points on here. So even though they weren't necessarily on the picture, I do want them on mine. And I went over just the eyeball. Okay, so I think that looks pretty good. All right, hang on. Okay, I went and looked it up on my laptop real quick. <laughs> it appears that their little legs have some brown and some gray streaked in. Actually, you can't usually even see the legs, which I thought that was a pretty sneaky way of not having to show the color. So... I used these two and I'm going to come in with this lighter shade just to kind of blend them a little bit. Birds legs are usually pretty dirty looking and why not? They're on them all the time, you know? Think about what they're used for. Of course they're going to be dirty. All right, so there we go. So I am going to go upload this little guy. Oh, let me also show you. If you decided that you wanted him to look more like he's got feathers, you can come in and do this motion all over. And that's how you're going to get that look. Now, I've barely got any white left so this is probably not going to show up much to you. I can see it a little bit because I'm right here. I'll come back in with this other darker. And just do a few little, it's as if it was the feathers. When you do this be sure you're going the direction that this would all be growing from. Okay. And yes, it does tear up all that smoothness that we work to get. 
but it gives him a little bit of texture. And again, I don't think you can really tell it from where you are. Let me see if I can actually take the phone down off of here. All right, so there's our little cardinal. I think he turned out okay. And see if you really look at that portion where I did the purple, you can't really tell it's purple. It just looks like it was pushed to the background and that's what we wanted. So, back to our page. Next thing we're going to be working on is over here in these trees. So, get your greens and whites and blues ready and I'll meet you back here in a little bit.